Hi, and welcome to the Painting with Commentary for the Nozzle's Marvelous Miniatures Customized Frost Giant Episode, Paint to Life Episode 38, where we take the Frost Giant and turn him into Christmas, aka Crush Kringle. So, very beginning, this is the Frost Giant that I painted before I was doing Paint to Life. I remember when I was painting him, thinking he looked a little bit like Santa Claus. This picture of a badass Santa comes to mind, and next thing you know, I'm sketching out how could I turn that Frost Giant into a customized uh, Santa festive looking giant. So there was my plan and that's what I'm going to go with. So right off the bat, I'm going to take this frost giant off of his base as I do many times for many of the miniatures that I paint here on Paint to Life. However, this one was atrocious. This was the beginning of the many problems that I had with this miniature. And we focus on the failures as much as the successes. So it was just part of the base even though it looked like it should come off easily it didn't I end up getting big old thick snips and cutting through making a giant mess and ultimately once I got it cut down I was able to pull it off and um, you can see how see how the plastic ripped it was merged with that glue and his foot broke so I need to glue the foot back together and trim it. And using my X-Acto knife from Citadel, I broke a blade actually cutting this piece of plastic, which flew up. So I'm gonna tell you, always use eye protection when using the blade. So the next thing I was trimming away his axes, um, one hand for his bag and the other hand for his candy cane weapon. So with the bag hand, I needed to dremel a hole, dremel out the piece just so that I could have the um, twist section of the bag coming up from the hand so the bag was going to be in two pieces the part that comes out the top it's going to look like a balloon tie and the part that's down at the bottom the actual bag if you don't have a dremel i would suggest getting one if you ever want to do any customizations i love this and this little bit it's like a little sanded bit um, as you can see now i'm just trimming out the pieces they have different drill bits that go with it it's just very handy to use when um if you ever want to customize these things so I drilled out a hole at the top and the bottom and I'm just cleaning it off here with the knife, getting it ready for the piece that's gonna go in there. Now onto green stuff. So if you've never used green stuff, here it is from Army Painter. Mix the two pieces of epoxy together, the red and the blue, do it thoroughly. It's gonna get a little uh, sticky as you do it. And I've read that for sculpting, you should let it sit for a while so it's not so sticky. So I'm breaking it down into three. I moved my cutting mat so I could see it better on camera. See how sticky it is? It's sticking to my table here. So let it sit, get some water, and uh, oh yeah, see those things on the original? Those are like dragon claws or teeth. Obviously reindeer wouldn't have those, so I'm gonna remove them using my knife. Now, again, back to the safety point of this video, as I was using this, I slipped the knife and cut myself really badly. I'm joking, that's not my finger, nor did I cut myself, but there were a few close calls, so I really should have been using gloves, uh, especially the longer you do this sort of thing. Don't be stupid. Use safety. I know I'm cutting towards myself there. Um, again, you know, don't do that. Use gloves. When it was done, I used my Dremel to draw vertical up and down lines through the shaved plastic. So I got nice smooth cuts where it was, and um, then I used this sanding Dremel tool to just kind of etch a beard in place where it was not and see the Dremel gets hard plastic caked on the tip and um, you just you know have to pop that off can't really explain otherwise how to use it you just kind of play with it and remember no one's judging you on this it's all for you and your creative juices go nuts and if you make a mistake it adds character to the model a little sandpaper to get some of the burrs off that's just like a, a I don't know 150 grit so the first piece that I'm going to add of green stuff is this Rudolph looking nose to this reindeer skull, which was a dragon skull. And the second piece I'm going to make is the um, top of his bag. So I start by making it flat and rolling it on top of itself, kind of trying to make a star like a starfish. This was second attempt. It didn't work very well. Again, I just had to keep trying things until I got something that worked. And this is kind of one of like a flower effect, something that looked like a tulip or a rosebud. So I flattened it out, wrapped it around the base of the handle of a paintbrush, uh, and then I gave up on it again. <laughs> added some water. Yeah, if you add a little bit of water to the green stuff, it makes it less sticky. Because that was the problem. Even in my paintbrush, it was sticking to the bottom. 
There we go. Now I got something. That looks about what I'm looking for. Just a, a crumpled up bag. I roll it a bit, snip off the excess. That right there, folks, is what's going in his hand as the top part of his crushed up bag. There it is in place. I just put it on there to dry in place. I didn't actually glue it in there. I'm sure if you pull it, it might pop off, but um, the green stuff's so sticky. Once in place, it just kind of dried in position. Um, the Rudolph nose, I'm just using some tools to sm sm uh, smooth away my fingerprints. Um, Raquel from Rock Rex Art you know, says you can use some rubbing alcohol on this stuff to on Sculpey especially to smooth away the fingerprints. I didn't do that in this build and you can definitely see them in the finished version. So I started making this like a croquet mallet at the beginning. It's just going to make a mace with a hook. But see, it looked kind of silly because it was um, too toned. You know, you had this stick or this, this mace handle with this weird crook on the end. So then I realized the green stuff was pretty malleable. And there's a lot more there than it looks. So once I got my shaped hook, as you can see, I tried a few times. It just looks kind of silly. It looks like it's just clipped on. So once I got to working with it, I realized there was so much there. If I just used my fingers and pushed it down like a, a sock. This is about here. This is when I started over. Pull it off. Start again. Again, you have to try things. A little bit of water. Put it on the tip and I'm going to just slide it all the way down. Ease it on like a sock or a jimmy cap uh, yeah this was a pain in the ass I'm not lying I enjoyed this but it was a lot of work and I, I was getting happy with this hook here I still didn't like the bulge so as I worked the bulge down towards the base I realized geez I can pull it if I can get it to come all the way down it'll look like one piece and it won't have this bulge effect that's what I'm gonna do so I, while keeping to ensure that the crook didn't get too small or lose its shape I worked it down all the way to the guy's hand and then just like that his crook hook mallet mallet his crook hook mace was completed yeah this was my first time ever sculpting anything with green stuff it was very basic and rudimentary but you have to start somewhere and this was how I started hmm lovely this stuff paints real well when it's all done so all right now it looks like we're on to the bag so this is a sculpey or an oven baked clay the reason it's a bunch of colors like that is it belongs to my children who don't he take care to keep their clay separate so i take all their leftover pieces that look like shit and i put them in my box for when i need them so i'm building this i'm using the santa to or the frost giant to kind of shape it how it's going to hold i find a shape that looks good this it kind of looks like a balloon. Um, I'm gonna now paint, start painting his arm. Hmm. This part of the video is a little bit out of order, but that's okay. So Cadian flesh tone on all the fleshy bits. Remember, like most things that you paint, you're gonna to want to start from the inside and work your way to the outside. So the flesh is good because it's the closest to his core, as well as his face and uh, both of his arms. And everything kind of layers on from there. I mean, it makes sense, right? You put your clothes on layer by layer. But if you pull off all the layers, what are you left with? Your meaty bits. Flesh. So I started with Acadian Flesh Tone with the intent of using some kids left flesh to layer on afterwards. I did not use a wash on the flesh like I sometimes do. Um, I wanted to keep this miniature crisp and I wanted the contrast to remain especially with the colors. I didn't want to drown it out in contrast or wash um, as I sometimes do for the other miniatures I paint. And there's some good pictures of that at the end. A little bit of dry brushing, yes. And there were some washes, which I'll get to as the video progresses. So I'm starting with his mouth, which I'll come back to later. Again, it's the first layer I thin my paints Quite a bit so they go on nice and smooth without being too clumpy so next we're going to wasdak red for all of his wasdaka red it's a very kind of light red these are for all the chainmail bits and then i'll have a deeper red for his shoulder pads and then the, the part that overlaps the chainmail will be done in a green for that christmas red and green contrast overlay 
Alright, so I'm kind of touching the parts that are going to be needed. It's okay right now if I if I spill some. That was a yawn. You got me. I was yawning there. It's Sunday night, 11.30. It's getting late, but I want to get this done so that I can work on my next episode tomorrow night instead of doing this. So as I paint this stuff again, I'm getting better at painting in the lines, if you will. Especially with the big minis, I find it is almost like coloring. They have so many broad details with def definite lines. Uh, this giant especially. I forgot just how much of work it was to paint this giant. He has so many overlapping layers with bands and straps and buckles that when you start to paint it, everything just needs paint all over the place. So a wet palette will come great and handy and we'll get back to that as well. So he, uh, moving on to that moot green, lovely color. Don't get to use it enough in paint the like. It's just way too, uh, too, sh too strong for many things that we paint. It doesn't really look natural. It looks artificial. That's yawn number three. Damn, I started this without yawning. Now they're coming. <laughs> All right, Rune Blade Brown. Now here's my plan. To keep the number of paints on this guy down, I'm using a few, and in some areas, like all the leather hide parts, Rune Blade Brown is gonna be my leather. But I'm going to change the color of it later using contrast paints. So if you have contrast paints, Snakebite Leather, for example, Agros Earth uh, Dunes, Agrax Earthshade, um, the Sepia Flesh Tone, Dark Oath, you know, and the ones I use in this video. Each one of those contrast paints, if you looked at them all on a shelf, you'd say, wow, you have four browns, what's the deal? But in actual use, and the ones I use in Paint the Life are my favorites, um, they will absolutely make this look different. And that's why I'm using this same brown as a base for all the leather bits. And I will use the contrast paint to differentiate the different kinds of leather and the different darknesses versus putting out six different paints on my wet palette. I'll do them in post. If you will. Yep, you're right. That was a yawn. What are we up to? Four? Ooh, what did I say if we get to seven? Again, so his boots, I have no intention of leaving the boots the same color as um, the rest of his leather. Corn Red, now Corn Red, I'm sure if you play Warhammer, you know Corn, I guess. Um, Space Marines, maybe. <laughs> I clearly don't play Warhammer. I just know it as the Burgundy Red. The red that dries a nice deep shade of red. It's a crimson look. You see the difference already, even on the monitor, between the Wazdaka Red and the Corn Red. The Corn Red is much more brilliant and dark, and that is what I like to see, especially with those gold axes we're going to do. All right, so let's go back to our Sculpey. So there's the kid's Sculpey. I already sculpted it out with the model. I'm going to put it on some tin foil, and then put it in a toaster oven at 270 degrees Celsius uh, Fahrenheit for 37 minutes. That includes a preheat. And when it comes out, that thing is warm, but it is hard, and it's permanent. Now I'm using the Feast on Red, which is my favorite red in this line. I hear Fire Dragon Red or something in uh, Army Painters Nice too. I have yet to get it. The Feast in Red, though, is like my Fire Engine Red in the Citadel line. And that's why I'm putting it on the bag. And not so much on Santa Claus here, or Crushed, Crushed Kringle, because, you know, let's leave that. Let's use Wazdaka for these inside pieces and the uh, Corn Red for the darker pieces. But let's leave the uh, Fire Engine Red for all of his accessories. That's five. Okay, Black. So there's a couple blacks, and uh, they're going to pretty much stay black, but with some dry brushing on them later. Um, Santa does have black, and again, I'm using Santa as kind of our model um, for Crush Kringle. But really, for now, it's just a nice split on his belt, and um, where else do we put the black? Oh, his knee pads. This frost giant has these big plates over his knees where the furs are, and... Uh, Gonna paint those black as well. And then again, those will get a Necron brush, a dry brush, which will give them kind of like an irony look. And his belt is gonna get a fur. Um, I can't remember, it's coming, you'll see it. Okay, so now we're using uh, Gray Seer. Now this is an annoying color. 
It's a good gray, but it's pretty much the exact equivalent of what Vallejo uses to prime these damn things. As you can see, because I'm painting it on, and you know, if you didn't know any better, you'd think I wouldn't. I wasn't painting anything because it's sort of just blending with the original primer. Number six. God damn, those yawns are contagious. Who out there is yawning with me, making me yawn? I blame you. So, gray sear on that beard and on his booties. No, booties are going to be white. Just his, his uh, beard. Gray sear. More gassed bone. Nice cream bone. Again, he's looking very um, primary right now with all these single colors. Like color by numbers or paint by numbers kind of thing. And that's okay, because once we touch them up later, it'll get all fixed. Okay. I don't drink coffee. That's too bad. I could use one right now, I think. Uh, more gas bone is going up. And you know, it's not even like I'm just filling this stuff with everything I'm telling you guys. I kind of feel like this is the way a live stream would go if I was painting with you all here. This is the sort of thing we would talk about. So, I mean, I want to talk more. It's just, wow. Ceramite white is the white that I'm going to be using after I'm finished on the skull on his head. Ceramite white is going to go on those boots. Now, I, just like you guys, you probably don't like painting white. You have to do a lot of color coats to do it justice. If it touches any other paint, it gets all gross. Even these things, uh, it picked up something from... See how my hand, my middle finger or my index finger on my left hand is kind of red? That's just from handling the red miniature, okay? Well, that paint, even though it's just like a dusting on my finger, is transferring onto the primer. And then when I paint it with this white, it's actually turning pink. Yeah, right? So I'm sure that I would buy, I should probably hold this thing with a holder, but it's so damn big. You can see his boot there is, uh, is kind of pink. See the primer of his uh, left boot? It's very pink because I was holding it there. All right, my fire engine Mephist in red again for the top of his uh, bag. That looks pretty cool. In his hand there. Yeah, I like it. Oh, and also Rudolph's nose, the skull on his head. Also Mephist in red. Just, uh, you know, we can touch it up later. and See, I like how red that primer looks from just the handling. Once we put it, but, you know, if you will try to apply this white when that primer is still kind of wet, it'll kind of bleed through and looks pink. So, yeah, white sucks. Many layers of white. Screaming Bell, which is a, a nice copper has a lot of red in it and um, when I play that's why I chose it I didn't want to do gold again I did enough gold so for this cock piece uh, I don't know if that's the right word cock piece I just like saying cock piece um, if you know what the word is for that piece in the armor maybe it's just a buckle who knows uh, let me know because I like hearing about cock pieces I guess um, what else oh yeah so these little ringlets we'll do them with the copper too that's pretty cool. They look sharp when everything was said and done. Um, and again, you can't see it, but off to the side is my source drawing where I identified all these parts already and the colors I was going to paint them. Always have to have something to source paint from. Now he's got these like leather sacks. I'm going to paint them the um, brown again, the wound blade brown, knowing full well that I'm going to change them later using contrast. And in fact, I felt he needed a little more green, so I'm going to grab the moot green and tie it into those belt bags as well. The middle one, the middlemost one, is going to turn green later in a paint job. But for now, the wound, ba wound blade brown is just fine. He's looking pretty sharp. Definitely taking him off the base is a good plan. Maybe not so much for painting him. It would have been nice to keep him on the base. But, um, but ultimately, it's going to be great. All right, so we're still with our wound blade brown, putting it on these straps that go around his arms. He's got these weird bracers with some rings on them. They don't really fit into my Crush Kringle story. So I'm going to paint them copper again, just so as to not introduce too many colors to the model. And then I'll use some Stormhole Silver to highlight the wounds on the top. But for now, the back side of that, it's all leather, it's all strapping. We're going to use the wound blade. So here's the copper on those, uh, the Screaming Bell copper color on those weird pauldrons or they're not pauldrons pauldrons are for sh shoulders so i guess oh bracers yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know what those are for i never really did a full-on paint to life episode for crush so i don't really know i didn't really put thought in them let me know if you have any ideas what they are 
Ooh, time for the gold. Time for the gold. Auric armor. Oh yeah, this is my love-hate paint. You guys who have been following me know, Orc armor is like the truest gold of the Citadel line. Better than Retributor armor or um, whatever the hell the other one's called. I can't see it from here. All I know is it turns orange as it separates. So there's the... Uh, shit, that's going to bug me if I don't know what it's called. But, but here's what I do know. Orc armor gold, it's the gold in a bottle. Look at that going on there. It's nice and yellow. It's crispy. I want to paint some coins with it and cash them in real life. I'm gently applying it onto the details that are kind of raised out of that corn red. And I'm going to go around the outside edge. As you can see, the problem with Orc Armor Gold is it's so damn lumpy. Now, what I mean by that is, see, I'm painting it on the side. That look at how it doesn't really adhere very well. It's like brushing snot on something. That's a horrible way to think of it, but it, it's actually a perfect way to describe it. Okay. So you either load the shit out of your brush and just cake it on there, or you do multiple light coats, and that's the solution. Don't ever cake. You know, see here, I look how much I put on there. I was getting frustrated. Now, ooh, kitty's getting fed upstairs. Stormhost silver, a go-to metallic, the great silver. This is a no-brainer. This goes on like butter. It's fine. While I'm waiting for the shoulder pads gold to dry, I'll, to dry, I'll use the Stormhole silver on these uh, green. I wanted the silver with the green and the gold with the red. You can see I've painted all the way down everywhere there's red. Even the Wazdaka red down low by his pants are red with the gold trim. The shoulder pads are red, corn red albeit, with the gold trim. And the silver accents the green and the copper. Now, take some masking tape, cut a strip. Make sure it's a nice thin strip. And we're going to go up this hook. Now, I painted the hook red, corn red, because I wanted it to be the deep red. Uh, I kind of regret it. When it, when the finished product, I would have liked it to have been um, the nice fire engine, the Mephiston red. But you're going to mask off yourself a line, because that is going to be the red. And now we're going to paint the white, the ceramite white. Press the tape down as much as you can because you know it's going to slide a little under there a bit. There's no way around that. But the harder you press it down, the straighter you make the mask, the more less work you're going to have to do later. Is it a perfect candy cane, guys? No, it's not. It's actually shitty. But does it do the job, representationally speaking, for amount I get paid for Paint to Life, which is zero? Absolutely. I think it looks sick. The whole thing is awesome. Look at that arm with that candy cane. Badass. So... Time to pull off the tape and look at where all the paint spilled out. That's okay. Get your red and touch them up. Nice straight lines. Don't worry about what's underneath the tape. We got the lion's share of the work done by masking off that white. Or sorry, the red. And now we're just touching it up. You know? And see how that's really a deep red? The lighter red or the fire the Mephiston fire engine red would have been a little better, I think. But come see, come saw. That means uh, French. I'm pretty sure it means it is what it is. Or like this or that. All right, Vermin, Hor Vermin Lord Hide. So I didn't really want a black belt, even though Santa does have a black belt in Taekwondo and Karate and Jiu Jitsu. So I used a little bit of Vermin, Horde, Vermin Lord Hide to give it a little bit of a brown. And that's a good brown because it's got a lot of red in it, which ties together with the rest. Okay, fun fact. Apoth Apothic apothecary white so those were nice and white ceramite white uh, booties that we did and now we're ruining it with this contrast paint not true we are taking a white booty and adding a gray white contrast paint to it whereas the beard if you look at it now that all the other colors are falling into place the beard is a gray sear and we're going to dry brush it with a prexetti white yeah so the booties and the fur are white with a gray overtone, and the beard is gray with a white overtone. Ta-da! So that was how I planned to kind of get two similar colors, but not look the same. I didn't want it to look like he had beard hair on his on his clothes, nor did I want it to look like he had, uh, you know, armor hair on his face. So <laughs> I don't know how it worked in the end. We'll see. Skeleton horde. Here's the final mess up. I hadn't had a mess up in a while until right here. I took the biggest glob of that stuff on my brush 
and put it and it went bloop right on his beard right away why i started with such a heavy load i know i really wanted to get in there with skeleton horde and make all those holes light up brown the way they look now but geez mike calm yourself skeleton horde is a great color to make bone and now he's got it all over his beard. It looks like he spilled coffee down his face. Jeez. Here's what it is. So there's the first of the browns that were. Yeah, there it is. Ah, hold my coffee. This is the first of the browns. Now, snake bite leather. Check out how that looks on that rune blade brown. It's almost got like a, a yellow, orangey, tannin look to it. Everywhere where that is is going to go on there. And I, I'm a fan of that color. I think it's a great go-to leather. It needs some work afterwards, either like um, a layering or a dry brushing. Otherwise, it looks a little too something, something dark side. But for this, wicked. Um, there you go. I did that little pouch with green in the middle, like I said I would earlier. And a little snake bite leather on the top and the bottom around it. And now this is the Agaros Dunes, another one of my favorite contrast paints. It's got a yellow flare to it, but it's also still brown. Putting this on the boots for no other reason other than just so they don't look the same as the leather on his belt and his shoulders. Uh, Praxetti White on his beard, again. It's a gray beard with a white highlight, and the boots are white with gray highlights. Just be careful, you don't want to clip off some of the other things you've already done with your Praxetti White. But feel free to apply it liberally because you do want... Oh, the video is almost over? Where's all the time gone? This has been fun, guys. So now, this is um, acetylene whatever. It's, it's crazy glue. So I tried to glue... I had this red velvet. came from something my wife had. It's just fake. But I sniffed it out and I wanted to apply it as the base. I used this glue. It got, I put so much on there. It got hot. It was like melting, it was reacting with the plastic and the fumes, man. So make sure you're wearing your ventilator or at least to have a window open. I put the velvet on and it like was physically hot to the touch. But trust me, the other the other way was not so good. It the white glue just didn't make it work. So there we go. Here's what he looked like before I did any dry brushing. You see the um, the leather brown. It's still too much, and the skull was too much, and it was very one-dimensional. So let's get some dry brushing on this guy and call it a day. Yeah, here we go. So the dry brush you can see on his armor and on his bag. You can also see I've glossed his Rudolph's nose and the candy cane with Liquitex gloss varnish. Um, his face took a little shot of Gulliman flesh contrast paint just to dull those eyes and a little bit of red rosy cheeks. Um, the belt was already talked about. The, the leather, I used um, a terminus gray stone on top of that snake bite leather to make it look a little bit more rugged instead of being so orangey brown. And uh, then I used that flesh tone dry brush on the skull itself to bring back some of the bone color that was lost to all the brown. And then you can see I layered, I, I didn't cover this in the video, see his muscles, the secondary skin color tone of layering just to give it that extra look. So that is Crush Kringle from episode 38. I hope you liked this video. I know it was a little long-winded and I might have missed something you were interested in. If so, like, uh, leave me a comment in the comments below and I will get back to you with some solutions and answers. Otherwise, thank you very much for sitting with me through this. I hope you had a great time and a great week and you're looking forward to Christmas. I'm GMA Tank. I'll talk to you later, guys.